Okay, as we start chapter 4, and we begin with uh, section 4.1, um, we're going to try to get a sense of where we're headed, at least for the first half of chapter 4. Um, believe it or not, derivatives uh, show up in lots of contexts. Uh, we've already seen that any time a rate is involved, um, a derivative is really important. But there's another really nice context for derivatives, and that's finding... Um, the highest and lowest of something. So imagine, for instance, this function that I've drawn here represents in some way a, uh, a stock price. Then it would be really nice to uh, be able to locate, well, when is that stock price likely to be highest? And then I want to sell at that point so that I can um, make money. Or when is it lowest so I could be buying at that point? Um, you could also imagine if this was some function that involved the cost of producing something, then I would want to minimize the cost. I would want to find when the cost is smallest. Or if this was a profit function, then I would want to maximize profit. So there are a lot of times when we want to find one of these highest points or these lowest points. And you notice sort of conspicuously um, this highest point if you look where it's highest, this derivative ends up being zero there. So you're going to see a, a close relationship. That doesn't always happen, but there's a close relationship between derivatives and these highest and lowest points. So we're going to um, develop some definitions here um, regarding these, these ideas of highest and lowest point. Um, and for each of these definitions, um, I want you to kind of get an intuitive sense of what the definition is and a, uh, a precise definition of what, what uh, the definition is. We need those precise definitions because we're going to get some weird examples at some point. Um, so let me first just kind of draw a function over here. And uh, there's some uh, some things that I want to I want to some keywords that I want to introduce here. So let's first talk about the idea of an absolute maximum and an absolute minimum. Okay. So an absolute maximum. Let me at least write this out once in full. And an absolute minimum. Um, an absolute maximum is an x value where the function takes on its highest y value. So notice that this function is highest right at this, it seems like right at that particular y value, so kind of right there at that x value. So we would say if I labeled this, let's label this point A, that this has an, that this function has a max, an absolute maximum at x equals a. So when we talk about absolute maximum, um, we're typically referring to an x value. So it has an absolute maximum at a particular x value. And that's where the function is highest. Okay, so um, the precise definition for that is that f of a is bigger than or equal to f of x for all values of x. Okay, so f of a is sort of the biggest value that we could possibly achieve. No, notice that this is equal. And then for our absolute minimum, that is the place where the function is lowest. Notice that the function seems to be lowest right about there. So I'm going to get that, let's label that b. And we're going to say this has an absolute minimum at x equals b. So that means that f of b is less than or equal to every other f value. So for all values of x. Okay. So when I want to refer to the x value where this function takes on its largest value or its smallest value, I say absolute maximum or absolute minimum. If I want to know what the actual y value is, then I call, then I talk about the absolute maximum value. When you see this word value, it's actually referring to a y value. So that would be f of a here. So if I wanted to know what, what 
how big this actually was, this f of a. Um, I would talk about the absolute maximum value if I want to know what's that, the smallest thing that comes then I would be talking about the absolute minimum value. So that's what comes out of the, the function that's the smallest value. So value means y value. If they just say absolute maximum or absolute minimum, we're talking about an x value. So that, that's our definition for erase some of this here for what's going on in an absolute sense so not sure why those lines are there okay. now we're also interested these bumps right here are still interesting because they're they're kind of the largest value but not overall because there are other values that are larger but they're larger kind of in an area so if I were to look at a small localized area this is the largest point in this localized area so we want to develop um, a local version of the idea of absolute max and this is going to be called a local maximum Okay, and let's identify this point right there. So let's call this C. Okay, and what we mean when we have a local maximum at some value is that there's some open interval that I can take around that, where in that open interval, f of C is the biggest value in some open interval around C. The open interval doesn't have to be very big, but there needs to be some open interval around C that causes this, that f of C value to be the biggest value. Okay? And in a similar way, if uh, I talk about, oops, not the local max, if I talk about instead the local minimum or a local minimum because you can actually have more than one so let's look at say this one right here so at x equals d again if I take some open interval around this notice that d at D, we kind of get the smallest value in that open interval. Now, it's not the smallest value overall. There are other things that are smaller. But this is, again, in some open interval around D. Now, you should notice that um, C and D are not the only and a local maximum or local minimum. Here, going back to my A point, A is actually a local maximum too, because if I take this open interval, A is actually the, gives me the largest Y value in that open interval. So we actually also have a local minimum at X equals A. We also have a local minimum at X back here at this B value. So we have a couple of local maxima and a couple of local minima. Now, you remember that um, the plural of maximum is maxima, and the plural of minimum is minima. Um, if we want to refer to any of these, um, we generally call these extreme values. So, um, highest value, lowest value, we'll typically use the term extreme values. Oops. Extreme. So in the next video, I'll actually take some of these concepts and just work a couple of example problems just so you can kind of see how this